county or she <laughs> is, is counting the money, they would reach a certain point, and a one would go up on the scoreboard, and everybody like, yes, one child saved! And everybody was together. We could save so many children. If we did that each game, each series, we'd be like, do like seven saves, seven saves series for everybody. I don't know, and then at the very end, you'd still hoist up Stan. <laughs> Except in this case, Stan is a young boy, Whose juvenile diabetes just got under control. <laughs> the Lost Family is free! It's free! And you have like an amazing college party. You all do because it's so much money. It'd be amazing. Alright, guys, that's all I got. Let's just get on to the sport day. Let's get Screaming, 
35-year-old pushing up his glasses at me for four days, and I thought I was going to puke. But I had no choice. I had to go. This was my job. So I watched it, I folded it, and I packed it. It, of course, being my pair of pantyhose, and then I got ready to go. When we met at the Toledo, Ohio airport, Kevin dressed in a tie-dye t-shirt underneath his suit jacket, hugged me and go right in. Tiger, said Kevin. Tiger, this is it. I want to tell you something, Tiger. The most important thing here is taking notes and follow-up. You got that, Tiger? Every day after these meetings, I want you to go back to your room, and I want you to write a thorough call report on every meeting we went to. Then I want you to write a letter. I want you to write that to Ryan. I want you to thank him. I want him to know that you're after the business, that you want to close the sale. The sale is for closing. And you know what, Tiger? What I just said is an imperative. Every night you eat lunch. Then, with that, we began slush. We went across Ohio. We went to dog manufacturers. We went to hula hoop manufacturers. We went by the, to the paint by number kit makers and every toy, every craft, and every hobby in between. For three days, we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a client. And in between those three meetings, we had meetings. After dinner, I ran to my hotel room, so exhausted, but it didn't matter because now was the imperative. It was time to write. I would sit on the hotel's shiny, slippery, flowered bed spread, writing each call before it would walk in. Remember, this is 1979. I got no laptop. You name it, I included it in my call report. The model numbers of every Star Wars character, the 40 colors of the new hula hoop, and of course, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for seeing Kevin and me. When I finally did have time to shut the lights off, I couldn't, because then it was time for me. Then I had to scrub the meatball <laughs> sauce off of my suit jacket. Then I had to pop the pimple that had come out in the middle of the third afternoon meeting. Then I had to wash the pantyhose because I only packed one pair and I forgot all the rest of them. Even when I got into bed, I couldn't go to sleep. Because I was thinking about tomorrow's meeting. What would I say to the Winnie the Pooh finger puppet maker? <laughs> what would I say to the Bugs Bunny talking alarm clock designer? I couldn't sleep. And the alarm rang at 6 a.m. anyway, where I had to bound up and, of course, start the day over. On our fourth and final day, we met with Leo. Leo was the advertising and marketing director for a big bicycle manufacturer. When we walked into his office, the sun, just like here, was <laughs> pouring through the window. And there was dust just <laughs> dancing off of the little shiny fenders of all the bicycles that filled every single inch of the room. It was a very warm and cozy room. I opened the conversation asking about the new toddler bike that was coming out in January. And as I listened to Leo, I just felt the sun coming through the window. I took a moment and thought about my call reports, and I thought about oh, just, you know, maybe a blanket or something <laughs> comfortable. And while Leo was still talking, I felt something really strange happening. I felt my eyes crossing. It was the oddest feeling I had ever had. I'd look at Leo, and my eyes would cross. Mm. Then I'd open them again, and what's going on? I decided I would rest them for a moment. <laughs> just for a moment, just to <laughs> the count of five. Shut my eyes. One, two. The next thing I heard was Kevin screaming, Terry, put your goddamn legs together! What the fuck is going on with you? Get up! We're out of here! I, I ran out of the alley. I ran into the car. I said to Kevin, I must have narcolepsy. Take me to the hospital. But he wasn't listening to me. He wasn't listening to me. Close the door! He screamed, we are out of here. Close the door! Close the sale! Oh, first, I just had to close my eyes. Thank <laughs> you.
Any questions or should we open it up for anybody else's thoughts? Well, 